Hey everybody, I'm back with another live stream. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the live stream format. I don't really like to make the videos like I used to. Much, you know, many years on my channel where it was cut up and edited and stuff. This is much easier for me to just jump in, film while I'm working. There's a big snore for my dog. Uh, and get going. So, if this is your first time watching my channel, my name is Will Robson. I'm a comic book artist. Uh, artists on such things like Marvel's Great Lakes Avengers, Star-Lord, Thanos, Spider-Man and Deadpool, and many other titles. And currently, I'm working for Image Comics on a book with Tom McFarlane called Spawn Kills Everyone 2. Now, yesterday, we were penciling... Is it this one? Yeah, we penciled this page yesterday. So, if you haven't checked that out, uh, you can watch that live stream. It's up now on my channel. Uh, so, we this took a couple hours to do, and now I need to ink the page previous to it. So, we're going to get going with that. So, before we get started, let me just get up the YouTubes on my phone because my tablet doesn't like to send me the comments as they come in anymore for some silly reason okie doke so the chat is going do, do, do. chat is loaded up again if you're new to my channel and you hear a slight snore in the background that is my french bulldog she loves to sit in my lap whilst i work and snore away so that cannot be helped but some find it soothing hopefully it's not too much of a annoyance hopefully it's a a bit of comical effect so we get get going here he's sitting at the uh, sitting at the counter at a at a diner I was inking some of this yesterday after the live stream um, I didn't want to fully go into another live stream because it's good to break it up. I can't show you everything. If I showed you everything, you wouldn't go buy the book. And I need money. So. so this is the sequel to Spawn Kills Everyone, which came out, I believe... Uh, in 2016 is the first one where Spawn goes around killing a bunch of uh, what he thinks is superheroes but they're actually people in cosplay at a comic convention and the sales were really good on that book so McFarlane decided he'd do another one I just happened to be right place right time when I contacted him and I got the gig so that was great We need to put in a perspective ruler now for this panel to get things going. I think what we want to do is this. And where should the other one go? I guess pretty much like that. And then the other perspective is here. And what we want to do is, you see this blue line, that's our... Um, Oh, what's it called? Uh, horizon line. That blue line I just created there. So we wanted to match it up there so it's stuck. Otherwise, the straight lines would be pointing down in a different direction. So we've made our perspective ruler. We'll go back to this new layer stuff. Sorry, my dog is properly snoring. And then let's just chuck in a countertop. Like so. Actually, let's make it a bit wider. Yeah, that's good. Keep going. And then I'm just going to turn up oh, this button up here. See where I'm clicking? That turns off the snapping to the ruler, so you can now draw loosely. Otherwise, if that button's turned on, then you're going to draw all over the place. Oops. Obviously, do not close up that line completely. There we go. And now we're going to do Elizabeth. She looks a bit funky in this. And that's an extra layer we're not using, so let's put that outside. Actually, let's bring this in here, because I know I'm going to need it. 
So let's get to Elizabeth. So we're going to use my fine liner too. This is a custom brush that I made. Um, it basically, it's just like a, uh, a brush with a really low line weight. It, it's not, like, if you look at this hairpin sable, I can go from super thin to super thick, you see? Thin, thick. But with the fine liner, it goes... Like, you see how the thin to thick is not as, as big? That just makes it feel more like it's uh, an actual fine, like a real life fine liner. And don't ask me how I made the pen. I made it years ago, uh, <laughs> and it worked out, so that's good. I'm gonna flip this the other way, and we're going to lower the opacity of these pencils because they're a bit too, a bit too bright for inking. There we go. And on this, oh, we're good to go. Let's open this picture up a bit. I seem to always start with the nostrils. I don't know why. I think it's because it's the center of the face. Put some lips in here. Now, in my book, Elizabeth starts off as a 16 year old girl, but in this, she's definitely older than that. The lip looks a bit funky, but not funky in a bad way. There's the bridge of her nose. Let's get some hair going here. Now, which brush do I have? Turn the stabilization down just a bit, so it's a bit looser for doing hair. So there's not too much rhyme or reason to the hair. I want it to look messy, that's why it goes in different curls and directions. And even though it's curly on the sides, on the top is uh, she has a fringe, or bangs as Americans say, which I think is just weird. Like a fringe makes sense. Like a fringe. But bangs. What's that all about? But then again, we call a certain style of sausage bangers. But that's because they're absolutely banging, mate. But maybe that's why bangs are called bangs, because they're banging. Now well, we got a big time snorer today. I don't want to make it too muddy, so I'm going to leave some gaps in the middle of the hair. Otherwise, it just ends up looking like spaghetti. Oh, my. Some reason my phone automatically played the stream going on in the background. Okey doke. 
That's no war. That's no war. No war. That's what I deal with all day, every day. A snoring, farting, a sneezing dog. It's lovely. I'm glad I chose the French Bulldog. So this stage is called the line art stage. This is when I'm just using these lines to... I'm essentially just... This is like tightening up the pencils, I would say, this stage that I've laid down, because my pencils are very rough. And then it makes the final stage of the quote-unquote inks, the final inks, much easier, which is just doing uh, the line weights which is a very satisfying stage in comics for me because I know that it's nearly done. Because I was never really good at straight up inking a piece from, from pencils, even from tight pencils. I just never, it never felt right to me. But with this Freddie Williams method that I use, it's, uh, it's great. Eyes now. No one's in the stream. I guess it's pretty early. Just putting her eye makeup on. Applying her makeup. Putting the top lid over her eye. But you don't really. Use the bottom lid unless you want them to look old or tired. And Elizabeth, I've always given her black eyebrows. Does that mean she's not a really a blonde? Just changing the size and the rotation of the eye I've put down. And this is when I love using the flip horizontal tool to see where I'm working at. Now, if you're working traditionally and you want to flip your image horizontal, it's very simple. Just get a big mirror and put your image up next to it. And you'll be able to see a reverse of it. Or... Take a picture with your phone and then invert the image. And then you could see where the mistakes are. Like that's the thing about digital, is like a lot of people say like, oh it's cheating and all this stuff. But really it's just a way to, to speed up the whole process of drawing and simplify some things that would otherwise be 
time consuming. Because we want to save time, people. For instance, pick up my pupil brush. It automatically puts a hand drawn pupil that I did in there. this, make this a bit bigger, because the eye's closer to us, and let's make this one a bit bigger as well, we don't want giant people, so just want enough, yeah, that's good, and then we'll put final links on, on those uh, a bit later, you'll see, you'll see, We had a good turnout yesterday for people on the stream. But today, I'm all alone. <laughs> Just with sitting here. With no no questions to ask answer. saw announced that Chris Rial of IDW is stepping down from his position as editor-in-chief and is it CEO as well? The COO? Which I think is shocking news. And I really want to know what's next for him. He's a very lovely guy, Chris Rael. He always responds to my emails. I've worked with him when we I did a cover for Rom Space Night for IDW. And when I was trying to break in, he was the guy I had my first ever portfolio review with. And along my journey of continually trying to break in, he's... Uh, He's always been there to point me in the right direction. So I don't know why he's leaving or what's going on with that, but I'm looking forward to to finding out what's next for him. I'm, I mean, if you're stepping down to be the editor-in-chief of a comic book company, there's got to be something better on the horizon, right? I, th I think it would be fun to be editor-in-chief of a comic book company. I'm sure it's very stressful. But still very cool. I'm putting these little dots at the end of my lines to show that they are fading into nothingness. So it's a form of rendering. A bit of broken line. I always pretty much fill solid black under the holes of t-shirts or pant legs. Use the fine liner two, which is the same exact like pen, but the stabilization is turned up. Trying to watch your stream and Jim Lee's while doing my own pages. Nice. I didn't know that he was still streaming. That guy's uh, going for it recently. Well, if you need any any pointers, 
or anything from your pages, just let me know. I'm very happy to help out. Unlike Jim, who would just ignore you. Freaking Jim, alright? Screw Jim Lee. Nobody likes him. He's everyone's least favorite comic book artist. He's a hack. He's bad at drawing. He has a stupid face. I'm obviously joking. Right, I was just going to write in Elizabeth, but I think I'm going to type it in. Elizabeth. Select that, and then let's see what we can use for text. That looks good, so let's bold that up. And then we're going to select the that, we're going to click wrap. That's not what I needed. What happened there? Edit, undo. What the heck did I do? Did I combine all layers or something? Yeah, I think I did. Right. Let's try this again. There we go. Phew! I don't know what happened there. You know what's scary is if sometimes that could happen and then it quits out and then suddenly everything's combined. And you're like, why? Okay, and then we're going to free transform this. We're just going to make it fit inside here. Very blurry. There we go. I just changed it to a monochrome layer, which monochrome means it's only going to be black or white pixels, no gray pixels. That's what I work in. I work in monochrome layers because the gray looks poopy. We're going to ink some fabric being pulled on these buttons. I just realized I needed to draw. A torso in here a bit, otherwise she would be way wider than I anticipated. Snore. Snore. My dog is very bored. She's like, oh, you just do this all day. It's so boring. And I'm like, do you want wet food? She's like, yeah, I love wet food. You know that. Everyone knows that. I go, well, shut up then. Just closing up the ends. Going to select around Elizabeth and then we're going to use an action which makes a 0.5 line around her and a white layer and we're going to bring that to the bottom so now she is sticking out in white go to our extra outline layer And we're going to beef up some of the lines that we want to beef up to separate certain bits from other bits. So that it doesn't all blend together. And then when in the final links, it's easier just to add a tiny bit of line weights to stuff instead of having to add line weights to every little thing. 
and I think this helps with my art style. This stage to me is very important because it's not in the Freddie Williams method. This is a little addition I've created. And sometimes I outsource this stage to other people. If I'm in a jam, I will get other people to put these outlines for me. How's it going, Branko? It really helps giving your lines more life with those outlines for sure. Definitely. I'm glad to see that the chats are popping up again on the iPad. That's good. Hope you guys are all having a good morning or good late night, depending on where you are. We got baby spawn. Got Elizabeth. It looks a bit frumpy to be honest, but that's fine. So now we need to get going on the background. So I have these pre made folders here. I click in an action create character folder and it makes a folder with lines and extra outlines on it separated in color and then what I do is I copy them and I paste a bunch and that's how I work in these little folders it keeps everything separate for me so if I need to go back in I know where everything is instead of just on a bunch of different layers because that could get confusing right, let's snap this on so we have In here we have a microwave with cups, so we're gonna have to switch this up a little bit. We're gonna have to put the microwave here. Cause I realized yesterday when I was penciling, I was not staying loyal to this one image I drew here. That's okay. Snapping off, let's connect the dot, and then let's put a little couple of circles there to signify that this is some sort of machine. So that sticks out at the top. This is actually too close to that line. That sticks out like that. And what else do we have going on? And then it's the cups. See, I had coffee machines here first, so let's. Let's build the stage that the cups will sit on. So the cups are going to sit on here. probably going to cheat big time. Let's go to our other layer. Let's turn the snap off. Let's draw one cup. And let's 
make it count. Let's make it the best cup anyone's ever seen. Kind of making it that classic Coca-Cola shape gloss. We'll add a bit of lime weight to it. And let's add that. And then let's add a bit of lemon for the gloss. Okay, and then let's re-transform it and shift it over a little bit. Best cup EU will, 10 out of 10. Thank you very much. Okay, so we got a glass there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna copy, paste. We're going to slide this up, and now we got some stacking cups, people. Oh, yeah. Going to stack these cups. Look at that. Now, I drew... <laughs> I kind of drew the cup in the wrong perspective, but no one's really going to know that. It's okay. It's magic, baby. That's right. So we got stack cups here, and the magic ain't over yet, folks. What we're going to do is we're going to paste another one. I'm going to turn that off. Then we're going to take the stack. We're going to select all the layers on the stack. Do you guys know where I'm going with this? We're going to combine selected layers. Now we have a stack. Copy, paste. And we're going to build multiple stacks. Stacks on stacks. And what do I want to do here? That's right, I did. Now I've got to be careful here. I ain't done yet, I'm going to do some more combining. I have to change the perspective of these in a second. So let's now combine this. Free transform. We're going to pinch it down a bit. Oops. Hang on, we did not combine everything. Alright, free transform. And we're going to put this more in a downward perspective. Not too much, though. Make these glasses a bit smaller. That and then this end one is a bit too high. And then copy and paste that. Doom. Paste. Doom. It is witchcraft, I know. Oops. Now we get a nice stack of cups. Now we have a drinks dispenser. So let's get to doing that. Do 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 do. So this is a drinks dispenser. Yeah, 
you know, where you walk up and you, you fill up your soda pops. Oops. is to separate each thing mm -hmm. make sure it's correct Actually, you know what would be easier? I think. Let's try the curve tool. This is like using a French curve. Seem to her brain can't seem to see the perspective how far it needs to be over. Oh, there we go, it's, it's pretty far. The drinks separated. Then we need nozzles. That's where the soda pops comes out. Like so. And then in the back, you need little. holders so that when you push it the soda pops fills up do I need to explain what a soda pops machine is I think everyone probably knows well, let's close these lines turn our perspective ruler back on and as I remember these have little little grates down here don't they to catch all the oops Catch all the loose soda pops. But let's get rid of that because it is distracting too much from spawn and it's too many lines. That would muddy that would muddy up the image too much. Let's add cabinet a couple of draw dress drawers here. What we'll 
do is return off the perspective ruler or we'll get a big big brush. Actually we'll turn the perspective ruler back on. We'll go to dunk like this. Put it in a bit. This is to create the illusion that this is a door door handle, you know? Do you see it? Like a metal door handle. Shrink that down to six. Actually, we'll, no, let's do six. Fill that sucker in, and boom, we got a handle. Now, let's make up some fake Sony Pops names. So people in the chat, come up with some fake, fake names for Sony Pops. Obviously, the first one will be called. Bum Fizzle, I like that. Let's do that then. I'm just going to call it Bum Fizz, because I can't fit Fizzle in there. Give me a bit of that Bum Fizz. Some bubbles around. So that's Bum Fills Soda. We need Sody Pops, obviously. Which is my brand of soda in all of my comics. If you see any comics of mine, everyone's always drinking Sody Pops. that's what I call fizzy beverages Ooh. so we got soda pops what else what else can we have let's have um, I think here I wrote six up so we'll add that Bubba Cola, isn't that from something? Bubba Cola. Well, I can't write, if it's anything, this is fine because it's covered up. If it's anything that's actually real, I can't write it because it's obviously copywritten. Leslie is in Pepsi. Could be. Schwepsy. <laughs> I like Schwepsy because it could be like Schweppes as well. Bob 
but we can't really fit that in. But we're just going to pretend that it is. Even though you can't see it back there, Ishwepsi. Lovely. There's all our Sony Pops. Which one would you guys choose if you were going to have one of those? I think I would try Bum Fizz. See what that's all about. <laughs> right, so what I'm trying to do is make sure these lines are shut because I need to fill them in white. That should be okay, and then I can go back in and add some more. I want to add tile in the background and I don't want to have to erase tile as I go. Because that's annoying. So let's go like this. Fill that in white. Let's put this. Is this this layer here? Yeah. So let's put this below. And let's select this. Okay, they should be white now. And then this layer here is going to be the door frame. Oops, didn't have our perspective ruler on. Why isn't that closed properly? Here's the window for the door. lines up. Fill in the door. Okay, cool. Oh, and uh, this needs to be white there as well. Cool. I believe the rest can be tile now. Or checkers. I wouldn't fill in the black because I think it would... Obviously, it would take away from the image. So how thick do we want the sealer to be? That should be good. 12. Got to remember that. Okay. 
let's get to it then. Oops. Alright, I see we've already missed some stuff. What is going on? Oh my god, I'm just clicking buttons by accident. Okay. Laying down tiles. I think that's all we need for that. So, dump, 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 dump. Some tile. Mm -hmm. Shrunk it like that. Actually, that shrink doesn't look right. Is that right? And yes, it is right. Make it a two instead. Okie doke. Then let's take this. Now the perspective rules on. Fill that in. Okay. That's the basic line art for that panel done. I will say already on this page, I've inked the top panel and this middle panel here. Look at these sad little baby spawns. Oh, we're sad. And look how dramatic Chibi Spawn is. He's like, no. Right, time to do the final inks on this panel. This is where the magic happens, this is where lines get beefed up, and then suddenly we've got a fully fledged looking final piece of art that looks like I did it all with brush strokes or nib work, but I didn't, because that's difficult. You guys in the chat got any questions? Anything you want to ask? Sorry for the sniff there, I'm still getting over a cold. 
cold I've had for like three weeks. Getting shit done, you know. Oh, you made me swear. Getting stuff done. Getting stuff done. Your pace has really changed since last time. Since last I had the time to really follow you on streams. Which is about a year back. Thanks. A year back. What was I doing a year back? I wasn't posting too many videos a year back. Mostly commissions, I think. <laughs> Thank you, I should have. I should have. I just read that and I, I read a swear word immediately. I'm really trying not to curse anymore because I know you can get demonetized for videos if you curse. And also, I would like, you know, if there's children out there that are trying to learn how to draw. I'd want them to be able to watch my channel. <laughs> I don't get much anyway. I think I get paid like 60 pounds every year from YouTube for the videos that I do. And I immediately buy a nice bottle of whiskey with it. a year ago I think I was doing more Periscope streams YouTube whiskey is the best whiskey my favorite whiskey is Johnny Walker Green Label that's my go to because it's affordable otherwise I'd be drinking Blue Label because that my god Blue Label is so smooth I usually have it on the rocks, but when it comes to Blue Label, I drink it neat because it's so smooth you don't need it to ha be watered down a tiny bit by the ice. Oh man, summer's coming up. Can't wait. It's springtime. In the springtime and summertime, I like to sit outside in my garden with it. Yep, on the rocks. I know. Blasphemy. Um, not blue label on the rocks. Never. Just your general whiskies. I like it cold. But I have my whiskey on the rocks. I have my cigar. And I sit in my garden on the weekends. In the sun. Soaking it in. Having a grand old time. If I go on holiday, you should go on holiday to Turkey. If I go, I always bring tons of cigars and buy a bottle of whiskey. And that's how I relax. <laughs> I relax by filling my body with poison. Yeah, it's not high rocks. It's more affordable than people think. And if you let people know that you like whiskey and cigars, then... On birthdays and Christmases, you say, hey, all I want is nice whiskey and nice cigars, and that's what you get. 
<laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, I mean, you can talk about that stuff. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was funny. Exactly. I'm glad the chats are popping back up so people watching it later on understand what I'm responding to. I think I figured it out. I think I have to turn it off and on again. So where is everybody from right now? What time is it where you are? What are you doing? Look at the top of this hamburger. Doesn't that just make your mouth water? My sesame seed bun. I'm from Denmark, so I'm running an hour ahead of you getting ready to go shopping, but finishing up some good. Nice. I would love to go there one day. I think I think I've talked to you before, right? And I've said the same exact thing. be late. San Diego. Which of course means. I'm not going to say it. Oh, Rick. How's it going? Sorry, I always need to be reminded. I don't know people's usernames. I know exactly who you are. Netherlands, so I heard from you, and I'm drawing fan up for the upcoming movie Crystal Robin. Very nice. So no Americans in here. Oh wait, one American, San Diego. Oh Wales, but not gonna say it. I tried to rewatch Anchorman recently and it was not as funny as I remember when I was a stoner teenager. Some bits did still make me laugh, but God, I used to watch that movie on repeat when it came out. I could like say the whole film line by line. I don't know why I loved it so much. It just did crack me up because it's silly slapstick humor, which I love. Whammy. Coast all the time when I say I'm from San Diego. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sorry. I get. I. I mean, my name's Will Robson, so I always get ah Danger Will Robinson, even though it's not my name. I get tea jokes all the time because I'm English. 
It's just a part of life. People love to... They go, ah, oh, I know that. I know, I know this joke. Ha ha. Just gotta get over it. I'm sure you do the same to other people. Can you guys hear my fish tank in the streams as well? My fish tank is really loud. Do you hear like a constant dripping water noise? When I say I'm from Denmark, people start talking Vikings and expect me to know any Vikings personally. Do you know Ragnar? <laughs> Do you know Bjorn? Do you know Rollo? Do you know Floki? My name is Floki. I am a Viking. It's a pretty mean Floki impression. You can hear the dripping water. Well, hopefully it doesn't cause everyone to have to wee all the time. <laughs> My name is Floki. I really liked that show, Vikings. I was proper into it, my fiancé. Until something happens to somebody. Spoilers. And then after that something happens, around, I don't know, season four or something like that, and the show takes a completely new, different direction, um, I lost interest. I hate the sons of Ragnar. I think they're really boring and not great. Thank you. This is my Flocky. I'm Flocky. I build the boats for Ragnar. Everyone tells me, like, oh, you should keep watching it, though. Like, the the sons are great, and, and Bjorn is, like, the best, like, main character, and it's really cool and stuff. And I'm like, eh, I'm just not interested anymore. Sons of Ragnar are boring. So, sorry, which person in the chat says that they're Rick? Is, is it Richard? I'm really bad. I have a very bad memory. I'm sorry. I know who you are, Rick. I think I've done a commission for you as well, haven't I? A sketch card back in the day. Is your name even pronounced Rick, or am I just being ignorant? You're, okay, well that makes sense. You've just completely westernized your name. Well, not westernized. I thought your name was R.I.C. with a little, with a little asterisk somewhere. Way better than Richard. I'm gonna start calling you Dick. Of course not. I'm not gonna call you that. That would be rude. Unless you are a dick, I don't know. <laughs> Got him. Good one. The only person that calls me Willie is my brother. And my brother's wife. Because, I don't know why. My brother's friends, when I was growing up, used to always call me Willie. Yeah, that counts. So next time someone calls you prick, you'd be like, actually, my name's Richard. No, Dick is in Dick Grayson. The 
the best dick of all time. The ultimate dick. Or Dick Tracy. Has anyone seen that Dick Tracy movie from like 30 years ago? It's a weird. And Al Pacino and all that makeup. Like, props to them. Very artsy, cool-looking film, but not a great film. Al Pacino's just nuts in it. Dick Grayson is my favorite Robin. Then it's Tim Drake. Uh, I like Dick Grayson because when I was a kid growing up, my brother was a dick. <laughs> he never let me be Batman when we played games with action figures or if we were like dressed up, he'd have to wear the Batman costume. So I was like, alright, I guess I'm Robin then. And then I grew up on Batman the Animated Series, and then Robin turned into Nightwing, and I was like, whoa, Nightwing's awesome. The first ever comic book series I collected, like from issue one, to however many issues I collected of it, I don't know where they are now, they're long gone, was a Nightwing comic back in the 90s. I used to draw, copy the art from it. I thought the art was really cool looking. I can still remember this day, man. Like, you know when you get like proper nostalgia and your brain just like sends dopamine all through your body? <laughs> I just was thinking about the first time I got that Nightwing book and looking at the cover and opening it. And there's a scene where Nightwing beats people up at a pool table in a bar. And he uses like the pool like balls to uh, to like he chucks them into people's faces and things like that I need to go back and relook at that series because I used to love it as a kid Actually, I need to take a look. Let's have a look, shall we? Do, 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 do. Nightwing. Comic. I'm out, Willie. Thanks for seeing me. Gotta go get a suit. See you, man. Nightwing comic. 90s. Oh my god, there it is. Oh yeah. I used to draw that image over and over again. Oh my god, yeah. And grab something to eat. Cool. I'm about to take a break anyway myself. Just to let you guys know. I'm going to have lunch and then come back and finish up the uh, inks. Sorry, I'm just going down Nostalgia Lane right now. So, McDaniel, that's the artist? McDaniel, yeah. No, not DC Rebirth. Get out of here. Get out of my face. Jesus. Let's take a look. So it was this, this series here. He had the shorter hair. Do a Spawn cover tribute of Spawn fighting in the bar like Nightwing. That would be a really good idea. I like that. I'll definitely look into doing that. How's that the same artist? That says McDaniel as well. 1996 to 2009. Wow. Wow, that ran for a long time. If I just search Nightwing. 
Sorry, I've gone completely off of a tangent here. <laughs> but I figured you guys might find this interesting. So for Nightwing 1996, this is what I'm talking about. Scott McDaniel is the artist's name. Or is it Chuck Dixon? No, it's McDaniel. Oh, it's right by Danny O'Neill. Man, what happened to his art later on? Did you see the jump in this guy's art? Look. Look at these covers. That's great. That's awesome. What the heck is that? Did he, like, change art styles? Oh, my God. I remember this guy. Wow. This is a huge nostalgia kick for me. I used to buy these comics. I used to wait monthly. Oh my god, remember that? Man, I must have had a lot of these. Alright, get back to work, Will. Oh my god, I remember this. I loved it. Oh well. Um, oh, I have finished this panel. <laughs> Oh, my dog is snoring big time. Okay, guys. Well, that took way longer than I expected just to get one panel done. But it is a very pretty panel. So we still got this middle one to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ta, ta for now. Goodbye. Uh, thank you for joining this morning. I will be back in about an hour or so to do this middle panel here. So we can wrap up this page.